Hi guys, Jason here from Trojan Photography and today we're going to be doing a review on the lens coat. So I've had this for about 2-3 months now and I've used it in many different environments so I feel I've got a pretty good idea of it to give you the overall review which should cover everything. So got it from lens coat. This one cost about $90 or so, they range from about $60 up depending on the lens. You can get different patterns on them and stuff from just plain to these nice camo ones so that's really nice um, so the main reason I got this now they say you can use it for landscape um, for wildlife photography and stuff so you can hide don't know how effective that is I didn't really use it for that I more used it so my lens wouldn't get bumped and scratched which so far it has held up really well and I've pulled these off once and it was perfect underneath doesn't hold any water because it's closed cell so all the water runs off it. I wouldn't take it out in torrential rain, but a little bit of rain I've had out and it's fine. Um, no dust is collecting under it, so that's good. Um, the other main reason I've used it for is in either really hot or really cold conditions. So I go out and I take photos at motorsport events and stuff, and 35 to 40 degree days and stuff, some of them are. And I've had this lens on my camera and I've had my wide angle 16 to 35mm L lens which is all black plastic and the plastic lens really heats up in like 35 degrees and I've tried to touch it and it's really hot to touch whereas this I've had it out sitting on the lens taking shots all day and it doesn't heat up because the neoprene on it stops the heat from sinking in and it just sort of keeps it nice and cool so it's, it's protecting your equipment because it's not heating up Versus taking out the landscapes, and especially because this one's a metal body, the plastic's not as bad if you've got a plastic body lens. But the metal bodies really get cold in the morning for like sunrise shoots or if you're out in cold weather or something. So it's going to keep your lens warmer. It's going to stop the elements from fogging up because it's not cooling down the whole thing. And most of all, when you touch it, you're not getting really cold hands. So it works really well in that, and that's the main reason I got it. So let's talk about the pros and cons. So first of all, as I said, it is great for the hot and cold, so I got pretty average circulation and a lot of people will find it cold, like if you ever touched metal on a really cold, like minus three degree morning or something, it's cold and it hurts your fingers, it stings and you can't use your fingers properly. And you don't really want to have that kind of problem when you're dealing with like a thousand dollar plus lens or something and drop the lens because you can't feel everything with your fingers, so it works out really well. The texture on it's really good for grip. Um, next, it really does protect your lens against bumps and knocks. Like you don't want to scratch your lenses up. First of all, for resale value, but you don't want to walk around with lenses with huge dings or anything or bumps in them and stuff. And it really does. Like I'm always careful with my lenses, like really careful. But you're still going to knock it around a little bit. Like it's still going to get bumped every so often if it's on the lens. And that's what it's there for. Like it's a camera. You're meant to be using it. So we'll get a couple of dings otherwise, but yeah, like it's hit a couple of things, but obviously this, it's about, it's three mil thick, and so just nice, and it's padding your lens, so it's really good for that. Um, it makes it a lot easier to hold. Now, like, this material is quite grippy, or oh, well, the neoprene's grippy because it's on there, but um, the fabric they've laid over it, whatever it is, um, is nice and grippy, so you're not going to lose grip on that, so that's all good. It makes it easy to hold. It's comfortable to hold because you've got a bit of a squishy bit to it, so it's not just a rock-solid hold. You've got, yeah, so it's nice there. Um, the other thing is the neoprene underneath, it's, it's nice and grippy. It's the same stuff wetsuits are made out of. Once you sort of put it on, it's not sliding anywhere. Like, this back bit has slid back a little bit on me. But that's sort of because that's where I roughly hold the palm of my hand when I'm shooting and stuff. But over over like the focus ring and zoom ring and these other ones, it doesn't really move much. So it does stay in place. So if you spend the time to get it in place, get it all nice and lined up if you want or whatever, it will stay there and it stays really well. So because it's only 3mm, you can still, if you've got a lens hood on your lens, it will still store in reverse and you can flip it back on and that's really good because it means you can fit it in your bag because this lens barely fits in the bag when it's on a camera so it obviously needs to have it and if you've got a 70 to 200 or anything bigger sort of 
you really do want to fold the lens hood back for storage so it does fit over so that's really nice and the aesthetics are really nice like it is a bit of money but to protect against bumps and knocks and to protect it from the heat and cold it's comfortable and it looks cool why not if you've got the money and you're going to protect your lens so it's all good all right so let's talk about the cons of this thing price is a big thing and everywhere I've looked that's the main thing people are going to complain about and yeah it is a lot of money it's a hundred dollars essentially but if you're putting on like this is a twelve hundred dollar lens or if you're putting on a seventy to two hundred Canon that's twenty five hundred dollar lens a hundred dollars to protect your lens from getting scratches and bumps and knocks means if you sell it later on it's going to be good you're going to get more money for it because there's no scratches and bumps it, it's just going to protect your lens from all those little bumps and stuff. For $100, you buy a $100 filter to put on it so you don't scratch the glass. Is $100 worth it to protect the aesthetics of it? Like, the aesthetics aren't going to affect anything, but it's more of a personal opinion. But price is sort of an issue. It is quite steep. Considering neoprene's only like, like, it's probably got $10, $20 worth of neoprene on it, if that, plus labour. It's very expensive for what it is, I do think. Um, another thing which a lot of people have complained about are the switches and flicking the switches. So we'll go into a closer view now. So as we can see here, there is a plastic layer over the switches on this and obviously depending on what camera you got. But um, the plastic's stitched around so it's in there. And so on this lens we've got OS and, uh, and that can be a problem and it's annoying because the first time I used it I had that problem and I didn't realise so I flicked it, the op OS, optical stabilisation, across one flick and what it did, it knocked my um, autofocus off, um, yeah, autofocus to manual focus and I was wondering why all my shots are coming out blurry, I'm thinking, oh shit, there's something wrong with the lens or there's something wrong with the camera but all it was was this flicked across so be careful but Besides that, it's only really happened one or two times, and considering I've taken out almost two, three times a week for the last three months, and I've only had it happen twice or something, it's not a huge issue, and like realistically, if it's not working, you've just got to keep it in your head, it might be that, look down and go, oh yeah, it is, flick it across, it's not a huge issue. It's not as bad as everyone in the forums and online are whinging about, I think, personally. Um, the next issue I have is on the lens hood when I store it, so I flick it over like normal. Um, I found up this top bit when I've put it into the bag or into the case because this, this lens comes with the case, it um, it's crumpling up the edge a bit. So we'll get close into that. So right here you can see how it's all crinkled. Now the rest of the fabric's all nice and smooth. Now what that is, is when it's going into the bag, it's rubbing up the sides of it a bit. And it is pulling it away, and you can see it's sort of, it's not fraying, I wouldn't say it's frilling or something. But you can definitely see it's it's curling up a bit, and it's sort of wearing it down a little bit, I'd say. You can see in there the crinkles. But, um, yeah, it's sort of all over it. And that is definitely a negative for a $100 product. And as I said before, I think there's only about $20 or something worth of neoprene in it. So the rest is all labour and profit. I think that's a lot of money when it's got a problem like that. Personal thing I've got a problem with, and I think most people will, if they find they're having the same problem. You're spending $100 on, sort of, it's a premium product, I guess you'd call it. And something as trivial as that, I don't know, they could have probably had this so it folds in a bit more. Folds in as the lens would folds in so it didn't catch every time I put it in a bag or a case and like I'm not just randomly chucking it in or anything I am quite careful how I put it in but you can only put it in so carefully without taking too much time because usually when you're changing lenses you don't want to be oh slowly put it in you've got to put it in you've got to pull out the other lens get the lens on because you usually want to take that next shot so I think that's a problem and I think they should sort of try and address that in some way I don't know but um, it's, it does annoy me, so that is probably the biggest annoyance I've got. This thing sort of pulling back, and I'm thinking over time it's just going to keep pulling back. But we'll see. Um, initially I was going to say, for macro, 
if you don't line, so they're in individual segments, and if you see the unboxing, I show you how I put it on and stuff. It's not very hard. It takes a little bit of time. But if you don't line these up correctly, and you don't leave a nice little gap between focus and zoom rings, if you're shooting something like macro or product photography where it's very fine and accurate and you are going to be using a focus ring, you'll find it can rub in between these two bits of fabric. And so if you're focusing or you're zooming, it might pull the focus ring or the other ring, the other ring around on you. And so it can get a bit tedious, but all you gotta do is make sure it's still lined up. So it takes a little bit of time, but once you've done it once, it's gonna stay in position pretty much the whole time every so often. You might have to adjust it a bit, but to adjust it, it's quite simple. You pull it up a bit and you pull it across. You pull it up a bit, you pull it across. So it's pretty simple. So I hope you enjoyed my review on it. Um, leave any comments below if you have any questions and I'll answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, more tutorials, videos of unboxings, reviews coming out. And you can find me at www.trojanphotography.com and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash trojanphotography. Thanks guys.